to see you all tonight. My name is Rob Moynihan. I'm with the TV Guide magazine. And uh, let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it. Please welcome Daryl Dixon himself, Norman Reedus. What's up? Hi. Uh, thanks. Thank you for being here, Norman. We know you're in the middle of shooting now. Yeah, yeah. So we appreciate your time. And since we are at SAG, I'm very curious uh, to kind of kick it off uh, and ask about your audition for The Walking Dead and kind of what that process was for you. Uh, I mean, I came out here, I live in New York, but I came out here for pilot season. And, you know, it was, it was one of my first times to do that. And it was like, you know, a bunch of scripts of, you know, sick TV, you know, roommate sitcoms or fucking... Uh, <laughs> cop shows or doctor shows or whatever, right? And then The Walking Dead, I was like, what the fuck is this one, right? And um, I was just like, just get me in to meet those people. Like, that's the only one I like, you know? And um, uh, I was told that, that Merle was cast, but they had me read Merle lines, and I was told Michael Rooker was playing that part. Um, so I thought maybe he couldn't do it, or he said no for some ridiculous reason. Um, and I read, and I was thinking, you know, whatever. That just, I just wanted to be in there. And then I went back to New York, and they asked me to um, uh, go in and read different Merle lines. So I was thinking, like, he definitely said no. And, but then I kept hearing he was still playing that part. So I went in, I read different, different ones. And then I was walking back to Chinatown and got a call that Frank Darbon wrote a new part for me. So, yeah, so that's, you know, God bless that guy. You know what I mean? yeah. So you must have really made an impression in the, with those moral lines then, too. You know, it, there was so much there already. It was so well written, you know, and I knew it was Frank Darabont, and it was Gail Ann Hurd, and it was just such good quality stuff. And reading the pilot, it, it didn't seem, I just did Conan, so excuse the monkey suit, um, <laughs> and the makeup. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I'm wearing makeup. Uh, uh, where was I? Uh, where was I? Just Frank. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank. Um, so I just knew it was good. and, and, and uh, <laughs> Call me. Um, but he, um, I, I just knew the quality of it, you know what I mean? And uh, I don't know, I, did, I read it and it didn't seem, and, you know, you know they, they give you the script and they're like, oh, it's a zombie show. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And I, I read the, the pilot and I didn't even register it was a zombie show. I was so well written and uh, the characters were so real. Like the, the zombie thing was such second fiddle to what I knew the meat was all there. So um, yeah, I was just, I was happy to get that part for sure. Well, it's based on the source material by Robert Kirkman, but yeah. clearly Daryl is, is a new character to the universe for this show. Do you prefer it that way, or do you kind of wish you had some source material to, to research? I, you know, there was this movie that Willem Dafoe was in a long time ago, and who's that, act, who's that director that did uh, that movie with Jeremy Renner that won, like, every award? I'm so bad at this. Yeah, Hurt Locker. Yeah, Catherine Brigo. But she did a movie with Willem Dafoe ages ago that I remembered seeing him when I was a kid. But um, he talks about he was with some like girl, right? And he goes, he goes, the door was wide open. <laughs> yeah, I remember that line from that. But it's sort of like that for me on the show. But um, you know, I, even going into like. I never had a conversation with Frank the whole first season about my character, not one. I met him actually at the CDC, the last episode of season one, for the first time. You know, I was like, oh my God, Frank Darrow. But um, he kind of let me run with it, you know? And I remember that first scene that I'm in, like the whole cast knew each other. They'd already done promotional stuff and been on press tours and I had already buddy-buddied up and stuff. So I was like the new guy. but. Which, which is nerve-wracking, but, um, yeah, and I was already, like, trying to get a mullet for the thing, and, yeah, I mean, it was like, I, I was a, such an asshole, but, um, uh, they, uh, that first scene, I remember, um, you know, where I got the squirrels, I'm like, Marl, we got squirrels, let's throw them up, and he tells me, you know, the sheriff and everybody tells me that he's been trapped on a roof, 
And I remember doing that, and I'm like, it's throwing squirrels. You guys want something like this? You want this? Like, what kind, you know, where are we, you know, what's going on right now? And I remember that first scene, I, I kind of walk up, lead in the pack, and then I pull away from the pack, and then I turn around when they tell me that, and I'm yelling at him, but like the whole cast, and there's a bunch of them at that time, were all behind him. And it, it put me like way over here in a position where I was so awkward. All eyes were on me, you know? And it was also new, a new cast that I just met. You know, and the crew was everyone's family already, and it kind of put me in this position like I was on the outside, and that all that stuff about like, you know, like anger, 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 because it was written fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you know, and all that stuff is turning away and trying to tear up a little bit, like could still be a little brother that lost a big brother was all on the fly based on what was in front of me, you know what I mean? So I just kind of ran with that and. You know, I, like, I've always tried to play him since that moment. I mean, there's like reasons why people fight, you know, like you fight to prove a point or you fight to, to I don't know, protect somebody or whatever. But I've always played him like he's, he fights because he's always had to fight. He's always had his back up against the wall. Like that's the kind of fighter he is. And, uh, it, and back then too, like that character was, it naturally sort of turned into this, but like everything kind of came out the side of his face. You know what I mean? Like. Like he'd look at you, then he'd look down. He'd look, like he doesn't want to connect with you. Because, right. and there's shame. Like, you know, that's like, I, you don't like me. I know you don't like me. Which is kind of how I started my career. But um, <laughs> it's true, yeah. Um, but so it, it, everything came that way, you know? Like, like I have secrets. I don't want you to know, don't know me too well, you know? Um, and now that character is like right in your face. And it's, he's, his shoulders are square. And he means everything he says, and he says it very precisely. But it's just, that was the natural evolution of that guy. And I'm lucky that the writers saw where, we were, where I was headed or trying to head and helped me get there. It, I mean, it's, it's very, that job in particular, it feels very collaborative, mm -hmm. which is rare, yeah. you know? Well, he's very much, he started very much as the lone wolf. And now we saw in the season four premiere, he's really kind of stepped up and, and is maybe the new leader to this group now. Too. And does it surprise you at, at this path he's gone for the last three seasons? Well, I mean, they, you know, they pitched me this season ahead of time and they're like, oh, you're kind of stepping up as the leader. And I was like, what? No, no. <laughs> Why not? Because he's not that guy. It, you know, he's like, I mean... Like even you know even before like there was moments you know where we're looking for Sophia and Rick's like no 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 so, you know wait for us let's let's form a plan and we'll go together and he's like no nah, man I'm better off on my own like he's always been that guy and like and that whole thing with Randall like you know where I beat the shit out of him he told us what was up and we, there's a governor and the governor has the people and they have guns and they're all evil but like that I love that scene because. And that was something Greg Nicotero came up with and fought to put that in that episode. He directed that. It was his first direct, directing gig on that, on that show. But, because he just, you know, everyone's trying, we lost, we lost Dale because of Randall, trying to figure out what to do with Randall. And uh, it was two whole episodes de devoted to, do we kill him? Do we set him free? Who have we become? You know, and Daryl just quietly went over there. No one's looking, beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> walked back with bloody knuckles, sort of hiding them and just said, this was up. He didn't walk back going, hey, look at me, look, I got the answers. And, you know, he, he didn't, he, it's not his style. His style is to quietly just get it done. He's, he's very loyal, that guy. And he's, I don't want to be the leader. And I was like, no, no, I don't want to do that. And I was like, he's a reluctant leader, right? Right, right, right? You know? <laughs> so, so there were like little alterations are made always. And I mean, it's good, like TV, this is my first like real TV thing. Um, I did an episode of Charmed because I had a crush on Rose McGowan and she, and, and she asked me to. And she was like, will you play my boyfriend? I'm like, fuck yeah. yeah. But that didn't happen. But, um, but um, TV is interesting because like movies, you have, uh, you have this amount of space to tell a whole story and you can fucking gain weight, get muscles, grow a beard, whatever, but it's not the same. The television, you have four years so far to... Um, the little things in between, you know what I mean? Like, like you get to, 
sort of drop these little seeds behind you as you're going. And sometimes they turn into, into trees and storylines. And you have four years to plan all these little things, you know, and, and it's fun. And, and to watch them happen. And I think with this show in particular, people pay attention to the, the little trees popping up behind you, you know? Yeah. And it's the same thing with, like, Carol. Everyone's like, when are you going to bone Carol? Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's, I mean, I get it, like, a billion times a day. And... and How'd you know what my next question was going to be? Come on. Because they're all that, you know? <laughs> but, um, I mean, like, all... I mean, that... I, like, I want to earn that if that happens, you know? I mean, all the little awkward stuff that happens when a boy meets a girl, like, all the things you kind of don't want to happen to do and say and wish you took it back, you know? All those little moments are so much more interesting than, you know, throwing somebody against a tree in the moonlight. And then it's over. It happened. You know what I mean? Like, I want to earn it. I want, I want it to be awkward. I don't want to make the first move. I, I, you know, I don't want to have experience. Do you think it's headed in that direction? Do you think that's where... I can't where tell it? you that, man. I, 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 AMC is probably tracking us from space right now. <laughs> a, little, a little laser dot on my forehead if I say the wrong day. You know? Well, even if it's not Carol, do you think that Daryl needs, needs some love in this post-apocalyptic world that, now that he's a, he's a reluctant leader? I mean, he definitely needs a hug, that guy. <laughs> You know, but, I, you know, I mean, once it's, it happens, it's done. You know what I'm saying? So I just want, I, I, you have this time to, to, to earn it. So let's earn it. You know what I mean? So I'm constantly, like, you know, fighting. I mean, there was early scripts that had Daryl taking drugs and saying racist things. And the beauty about that dude is he was he was destined to become his brother, right? Which is like another whole punishment, you know? So I wanted to play him. I told the writers, I was like, I want him to be more of an Al-Anon member than an Alcoholics Anonymous member. You know, I want him to grow up ashamed and trapped. And then once the brother was gone in the second season, he sort of started to become this man that he never would have become. He sort of found self-worth through these people, you know? Like, he's never had that kind of love, you know? So that's, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So they kindly me, um, which is great, you know? It's, it's uh, I just think it's more interesting to watch this guy who, he can, he can, you know, hunt his own food, he can take care of himself, he knows how to live out in nature, but it's a different struggle for this guy. It's how to get along with people and, you, oh, you, you, you rely on me? You like me? Like, you, you know, he, he, he's finding reasons to fight other than he's always had his back up against the wall. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm curious about, because you mentioned the, the relationship with Merle and, and him being away in the second season. I want to ask specifically about the uh, season three mid-season finale, or, yeah, mid-season finale, when you're in the arena, the bag's pulled off over your head, and, and you see your brother for the first time. And I think the way you guys played that was so brilliant in that, you know, there's love there, but, you know, oh, shit, how do we get out of this situation? Can you kind of talk about yeah. what it was like filming that moment and filming that well, scene the, with Michael? The, um, the, it's interesting to work with Michael, first off. Um, <laughs> he's kind of like the Tasmanian devil, okay? <laughs> um, but he's interesting. But he commits to a thing, and most, most, most of the times, people around him have to join his train, you know? That... That scene in particular, I sort of steer the train in a little different direction. But, um, you know, I mean, we could have played that. And that was sort of written like, fucking, you know, we're going to fight our way out of this, you're all going to die. You know, it was sort of written like that. But I wanted to play it like I was going to be executed. Like that, the bag's in my head, it's over. It, this, the more scared I play that, the more little brother I play that, the more big brother he becomes. And the more there's that again, there's that reason to fight again. And, and Michael, he, he did that so well with what I was giving him. You know, it's, it's very un to be scared mm -hmm. like that. It's, he's more of a, of a wolf, like he, he'll attack you. But, but that, that scene in particular, it had to be played that way to show what that means. And it, and, you know, Daryl feels that there's hope for his brother. Like, y you can come back. You stop being an asshole. You can come live with us, and it, it, we can make this work. That, that sort of almost reaching there for a little brother is so tragic and so 
heartfelt, you know? So to give that, that is, is real good. But um, what do you call those little, like, uh, GIFs? Is that a GIF where the picture moves in a circle? Um, I saw one of those someone sent me, and they sent, they sent it with a big explanation that was really cool, and I was happy someone saw that. But when, you know, the governor is giving his speech and it's like the bad guy, right? That, all my attention is at Merle. You know, and one of those little things, you see the governor give his speech and he pulls the bag off my head and my eyes first land on Merle and I back into the governor. Like the monster is something that, that I'm leaning back against. And you know, that, that, that story is more interesting to me than this is a bad guy and he's talking shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause that, I haven't, it's the first time I see him. Right. And even right before that, like we hear that he's in the town and you know, Rick is saying, you know, do, you know, do this, do that, and I'm like, Merle's out there. I'll just, I'll walk out there and fix this right now. Yeah, that's Middle still the, fight. but yeah. that's still little brother going. He's little moments of little brother scared stuff is real good. Well, then I want to ask too about the penultimate episode of last season when when you had to ultimately put Merle down, Zombie Merle, and really Daryl showed more emotion there than we were really used to seeing to seeing Daryl show. Can you talk about filming that scene? Was it tough for you guys? Did you have a conversation with with Michael beforehand? Um, just what, what was that day like? That, that well, I, you know, the writing staff on this show is really good. I mean, the best I've ever worked with. Um, I remember the Cherokee Rose episode and I remember like oh, wow that just came out of left field like that little storyline was so good but that day with Rooker um, I, I've had many conversations with Rooker before that but because in Georgia the whole cast lives up in Atlanta and I went the other way I live way deep in the woods right <laughs> I mean so, uh, you know I live in New York what's Atlanta got like a Chick-fil-A and a fucking mall like I don't need it you know what I'm saying <laughs> I like Atlanta, if anybody's from Atlanta. But, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I live in Manhattan, right? So, and I ride a motorcycle to work, so I, out in the country is a, a much nicer ride. But, um, but Rooker stayed there as well that season. And he and I had dinner all the time and got to know each other. And uh, I'm a big fan of his. And, you know, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer is, like, one of my favorite movies. And, and um I just got to know him really well. And I remember reading that script going, man, this day's going to suck, you know? Like, he's just going to suck. And I don't know, it's, it's interesting. I'm always learning all the time. You know, I remember one of the first, actually the first movie I ever did was a film called Floating. And it was, I had no idea what I was doing. And, and there's, it's about a kid whose dad is in a wheelchair from a drunk driving accident. And all his friends are at the age where they're going off to college and starting lives. And he's stuck there with the guilt of dealing with his father in a wheelchair. And in real life, my dad was sick and in a wheelchair, just coincidentally. And the, right before we do this scene where I come out, the, and the, the dad gets out of the chair, like this, gives me a hug. It's a big fucking moment, right? So we're about to do it and the director comes up to me and he's like okay what do you want to do to prepare for this i'm like what are my options like what are you talking about right and like no idea no clue um yeah and then uh i was like well just give me a phone and i'll call my i'll make a phone call and just come get me in five minutes and i called my real dad and just had a normal conversation with him and came out we did the scene, and the first scene, I cried so much, so much snot came out of my face, I couldn't use it, which I begged him to use, right? Um, and then we did it again, and then we broke for lunch. And we shot up in Maine, and everyone ate lunch in a big tent with heaters and stuff. And I didn't go there. I went to my little tiny trailer, and I took a nap, and I was tired. And one of the grips came up to me. He goes, I know you've never been in a film before, but I want to tell you, like, the fucking lunchroom was totally quiet and nobody like touched their food it was like like you, you did something i was like oh that's what this is yeah i was like oh i get it but i'm learning all the time like that rooker stuff didn't happen like that like it happened through memories and stuff like that but uh, it was interesting for that because you do it so many times on tv and and but i got to a point where like like i, I could I knew how to get there real quick. I knew how to. I knew. I knew what that meant and how to find that real fast, you know. And in the beginning of uh, my career, whatever you call it, the 
it would take me a long time to get there. If I didn't come, that was a fluke, that phone call thing. I was like, I don't know, and it makes sense. And it was something about not being so wrapped up in what it all the fucking thing means. It helped me feel, uh, have, a, have a youthful, real, animalistic thought. You know what I'm saying? Um, not, I mean, not that that's impossible to find, but what I, what I mean by learning as I go along is I know how, sometimes I can get there faster. Not every time, but that, that was a heavy day. And I think Rooker like, talked shit about me like two days before that, too. So I was like, fuck you. But <laughs> still, he's your brother. You know, that's the thing. I don't know, I can't remember. Well, well now, now that Merle's gone, do you think that Rick has kind of stepped up into the brotherly role for Daryl? Do you view their relationship as, as a brotherly relationship now? Yeah, I mean, he's definitely the brother that Merle wasn't in a lot of ways. Um, it, that was sort of a natural progression, too, because I remember when Bernthal was on the show and a bunch of other people were on the show, was, you know, I came onto the thing and it was those two guys sort of leading the thing and I was always with them. And it naturally became, like, you see something here, you're analyzing it, and they would all look up and look at me. So I was like, I was in the group, like right from the beginning. Um, but I don't know, Andy's kind of my BFF on set. And, you know, yeah, I mean, there's, it, he's definitely, he definitely looks at him like a brother. I think he would, I don't want to say do anything to keep him alive because someone will hear that and kill me. But um, yeah, it, they have a type on. I think he respects Rick, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I do also want to ask about the, the crossbow, because the crossbow has become so iconic with this character, too. Yeah, me and Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it's good company to be in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, was the crossbow something that, that you brought to the writers? Did the writers have that in there? Was it? That's all Frank. Yeah. What, that, that's all Frank. You know, and the, the thing, too, like, like, you know, everyone asks me what the difference with the show, with the seasons and the showrunners, and, and, Frank, Frank did it his way, but our, our, you know, our second command was his second, second command, and he took over, and then he, that guy's second command was it. So there's never been like a blow out of nowhere system thrown at us, and you know we shoot down in Georgia, and we couldn't shoot the show in Burbank. You know, it's like we're down in our own little bubble, away from everything, and Starbucks and managers, and you know all the stuff, and it helps with that show. It really isolates us and, and bonds us, and that our whole team's like that, you know. Well, since you brought up like kind of the new leadership of the show this season, you have Scott Gimple as your new showrunner for season four. What is he bringing uh, in your eyes as as an actor? You know, reading reading the lines and reading these scripts that the show has been missing. Do you think in the past three years? I don't know if it's been missing. I mean, the the first season was six episodes, and you kind of had to show the world, you know, show the world that uh, through this character's eyes. The second season was a lot of talking because you have to, it's a TV show, you have to set up storyline. The third season was uh, like a war, right? This season has all that stuff, but you focus it on individual characters more. You see what makes them stand up and fight and what makes them afraid. And, and it's super interesting that the writing on this season is our best writing, I mean, by far. Um, I mean, every time we get a script, Andy runs to my trailer and he's like, did you read it? Did you read it? You know, I mean, it's, it's so good this season. You know, it, it got, it, it, it just jumped up like five levels. It's like, bam. It's really, really great. There was a fun little moment in the premiere when you guys are waiting in front of the big spot to, to go in there and they're trying to guess, you know, what Daryl did in, in the, his past life, pre-apocalypse, and you know, you guys are joking around and everything. But is that, is that something that you guys are gonna explore, maybe deeper into these characters' past? Are there big episodes for you coming up that kind of answer some questions you had about the character? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, for, for, a, for a whole bunch of us. Um, y you know, this, I mean, this season breathes differently. It definitely breathes differently. Um, the women this season ugh, are killing it, killing it. Um, I mean, oh my God, like you, you're gonna freak out. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, it just breathes differently. You, you get to know personalities more. Instead of like every episode, everyone has a line, it goes, like it'll branch off into characters, which is, is super interesting, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Is there a part of maybe Norman that gets into the character of Daryl or part of Daryl that gets into Norman or vice versa? If you're living, you know, you're in Georgia, you're in the woods, you're kind of always surrounded by this environment. Do you kind of, do you take some home with you or is it hard to disconnect when you, when you stop working? Yeah, I mean, there's, all, there's a whole bunch of me in Daryl. And I mean, I'm awkward and, uh, you know, socially ridiculous, you know. <laughs> um, but I'm loyal, and I mean what I say, and I mean, there's those things. I mean, as far as being like a hunter, I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not at all. Um, <laughs> if there was a zombie apocalypse, I would just hide, you know. Um, you haven't gotten practice with that crossbow. I'm really good with the crossbow, by the way. Um, I was in uh, Tokyo recently, and uh, I was on a live talk show, and it was me and this guy who was like a, a professional longbow, like a seven foot bow and arrow, right? He's like, I'm going off on a tangent. But um, <laughs> I, it was live television. He's like, oh, he's never going to hit that that far. And as he said it, I hit a target about this big from like way the fuck over, like half, half, half of like a basketball court. And just the whole place went, whoa. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a really good shot. Um, uh, and I steal a crossbow every year, so they're in Manhattan, which I think is probably a felony. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised you can get on the airplane with that. Oh, no, I, drove, I drive them back at the end of the season. And, you're, and the deal with them in the cars, they have to be in a case, and they have to be like two feet away or two arm lengths away or some shit. Like, uh, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm curious, too, because uh, I, I'm sure you've known that there's a, there's a lot of internet memes a, about Daryl. And one of the big ones from last year is uh, the baby when he's holding, when he's holding Judith. Um, do we the ovary thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, do we get some more uh, uh, baby moments this season? Do we have anything coming up with, with Daryl and the baby that you can kind of tease? God, every, everyone's holding the baby but me. It's just bullshit. Um, <laughs> You know, the, you know, the thing is, like, uh, I you know, maybe, I don't know, the ovaries were gone. I don't fucking know. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, it's a different season. It's, it's, it's not a, it's a different thing this season. It's not a, it, it's completely different. Yeah. You guys have a lot of new, new characters and new actors joining. I don't you think they season. want to think, like, let's pass around the, the baby and make everybody have things explode. I don't think it's like that, you know. Um, it's a different thing yeah. this year. With the, a lot of new characters you have announced, um, we saw Lawrence uh, in the first few episodes yeah. this year. We have got you've got some new ones coming up. You were the new guy at one point, you know, coming in on the third episode. Do you, you give them advice? Is there a, maybe even a hazing process with you guys now uh, on set? Well, that's where I'm very Daryl. Like when when new people come, on, I'm like, what's up? <laughs> I mean, I, I hate them when they show up. You know, um, I mean, it, it took me like a whole season to say hi to Chad. You know what I mean? Now I love him. He's great. But it took me a while. I was like, he was a new guy. Yeah, I, I did it very Daryl-esque. But um, it's, it's one of those shows where, you know, actors come on and they're like, yeah, I'm on the thing. And they get all excited. And <laughs> it's funny because you just sit back and watch it. And by like, the end of the day, they're like walking back to the trailer. Like, oh, my God. Like, like all bruised and cut up. And you're like, yeah, welcome to Georgia. <laughs> you know, you know it's... it's I mean, it's but it's interesting to watch them. It's it's interesting for me to be on the inside and watch what Stephen brings and what Andy brings and Melissa brings and how they change. You know, it's it's and Chandler Chandler's killing it this season. To watch him grow up through all this, like yeah, therapy for that kid. You know what I mean? It's yeah. interesting childhood for him. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Well, have you so you talk about injuries with new people? Have you been injured on set before? Have you? Dude, I, I've had stitches across my forehead. Um, How'd you get them? What I can't tell you. I, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but um, I fell. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'd be throwing someone under the bus. But um, that uh, I've 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 had so many onset visits of my knees. Uh, I mean, it's it's yeah. I was stung stung by a bee's nest the other day. Um, it, it, we're all hurt all the time. I've heard the ticks are terrible on those woods too. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, Steven, I remember first season, he got one like on the end of his dick or something. <laughs> Sorry, Steven. If this is it. Um, but he, but it was funny because like we, he told us, and then we went straight into an interview with CNN, and I told CNN, <laughs> right? He's like motherfucker. Um, 
but now he's publicly said it so many times. It's you know it's old news. But um, yeah, there's there's so much that. Yeah. Well, you know, this is a show that doesn't pull any punches when it comes to on-screen deaths and you know surprising us every week. Do you do you worry as an actor to pick up the next script and be and you just flip to the end and make sure you're on the last page? We all page? do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they'd be lying if they said they didn't. We all do. And if someone dies, I think they you know they get to know before. Uh, the rest of the cast, so they can say their goodbyes how they want, and you know, I think it's just out of respect they find out first. But uh, yeah, and then we have a death dinner where we all go to dinner and everyone's crying and drinking and taking selfies. It's bullshit. Um, yeah. But I mean, we're we're such we're so close down there. I mean, even the ones that are gone, like uh, I, I mean, I talk to John Bernthal all the time. He's in London right now. Um, uh, you know, all of them. We're all friends. Damon, all of us. There's always an opportunity for them to come back, too. We saw John last year and Sarah last year, too. So it really is a family w with you guys. Yeah, we actually really, really like each other. And it's it's rare. It's one of those jobs, too, where uh, I can be in the middle of a scene with Andy and I can be like, well, should I try this? I, and his, I, he'll give me an honest answer. You know what I mean? I remember my first, uh, one of my first films, I was doing this scene with this actor who's kind of a well-known guy, but... You know, I'm like screaming and crying and fucking like freaking out for this guy. And he, he's, 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 I'm doing it to him and he's over my head going, hey, can I get a cappuccino? Yeah. One, one cap and I'm like, is this how this works? Like, yeah, you know, and um, we're not like that yeah. at all. I mean, we really want, it. it's, it's, I don't know, we, we're, we're very invested, you know what I mean? Well, I'm sure you've you've kind of felt the fan support rally around Daryl. There's that big thing of you know if Dar if Daryl dies, we, we riot for for fans. <laughs> do, do do you feel a little sense of security because of the fan support, or do you still feel like you could go at any time? I, I don't know either one of those answers, but um, you know, I did this film called The Boondock Saints before, right? And then uh, thanks, but. but that film, I mean, we had no P&A and no, it never went to theaters. They say it went to like two theaters. Those are theaters that Troy Duffy rented to show to the crew. Mm. They, you know, that's how those theaters happen. But um, that film didn't have any of that and went everywhere. I mean, I've seen a, a million tattoos of Sean and I on people from the, I mean, it's crazy. But um, it felt, you know, it was passed around from person to person, you know, watch this, watch this, and it had this huge buzz, and it felt like the people's movie, you know what I mean? It, it didn't feel like hours, it felt like hours, you know what I mean? And this character feels like that to me, you know? It feels, I think, think the show feels like that to the people making the show, mm -hmm. you know? They're not out here, and there's, and nothing against, you know, the business and all this stuff, but like, this is us down there fighting for something we do, and we really don't see people till it's done, you know? But it feels like that, and the, the the character I'm doing feels like that, to be honest, you know? Um, yeah, it feels like like we're in this one together, you yeah. know? So so the fan interactions, I, lo I love it, especially on this job. Yeah. Well, I want to get to some of the audience questions that yeah. you guys submitted um, earlier. Those questions? Holy shit. <laughs> uh, Bree wanted to know, uh, how has your previous work influenced your character choices in new projects? Um. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, I just just asked this actually. Um, I think when I first started acting out here, um, I was so insecure. You know, uh, I didn't. This, this isn't something like I thought I would be doing, to be honest. Um, but I was so insecure. I just, I, I pretty much just gave everybody dirty looks all the time. <laughs> like, I like you must hate me. Fuck you up right before before you hate me. I'll hate you. Right, and. <laughs> I, somehow, I think that turned into acting work, you know? I mean, I've murdered somebody in almost everything I've done, you know? Um, you, know I th you know, my mom's always like, why don't you just do a nice little romantic comedy with, like, <laughs> like Jennifer Love Hewitt or something? I'm like, Mom, they like, look at me. They don't put me in that stuff. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't know. You know, it, it's, it changed. Like, sometimes... Not being overly hungry is good. Sometimes saying no is good. And sometimes interviewing a director is, is just as important as them interviewing you. Because I, what I found is like, if you, 
say you cry really well in something. Someone will see that crying scene and they'll be like, would you cry in this? Would you cry in that? Would you cry in that? You know, and after a while, there's nothing left. Or you just don't want, you know, it's not, it's not the same. And you don't know what sometimes what they're going to do with your movie. Like, you'll do up something in the movie and you'll be like, we're going for this. And by the time you see it, it's like way over there, you know? But, like, I don't know if I want to give that to you. You know, I don't know if I want to just give that to anyone that'll take it. You know what I mean? So I think that's influenced me. You know, um, yeah, and uh, you know, also there, there's this trap of like, you know, oh, you're really cool. You know, or you're you're really good at doing that. Sometimes it's better to you fall into this trap of just doing the same thing that somebody's. It's like a dog getting a treat. You know what I mean? Like, you jumped, here's a treat. You jumped, here's a treat. So the dog just jumps, you know, all the time. But it's sometimes it's better to just do the opposite. D do whatever somebody else tells you. And you're like, that feels so wrong. Well, that's good. You know what I mean? So that influenced me. Because I, I did fall into a trap of just, you know, doing these certain things, you know. So is a romantic comedy coming your way soon, then? I don't know. Jennifer, call me. You know what I mean? Like, um, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> Well, th this is kind of a fun question. I'm, I'm curious. Hannah asked, uh, have you or any of the cast been able to go to the Walking Dead maze at Universal Studios? Yes. And are you terrified when you're walking in there? Because that's your life on set, but are you, do they, do they get you? Do they scare you in that maze? I look at it differently now, you know. Um, I, I did it with Greg Nicotero, actually, who's, a, he's like the genius, but... He created that maze too. Yeah. yeah, I did it with him on a thing with some people. Uh, but, um, <laughs> um, I, you know, the, I mean, the thing with Greg too is like, you know, people ask, "Oh, the zombies scary." You know, it, it's it's how, he does them a different way. He, like, it's not the makeup that's scary. That he does it where you see like the lost, dying, sick person behind the monster. That's creepy. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I think that's what the show is about, really, is, you know, your clock is ticking, like our clocks are ticking, and these are your feet on the ground, and who do you want to be? Like, what are you going to fight for? You know, it, that, that, that element sprinkled in the show is what makes it real and scary, you know what I mean? Are you ready for the zombie makeup yourself, if, sh if it should ever come to that? Hell no. <laughs> I mean, those guys are great, though. I have to, the people that play our zombies are... I mean, you see the same ones over and over again. Like, I, I, had, I shot late last night in Georgia. And... God, what did I do this, dude? Um, to that one zombie in particular. Oh, yeah. Okay. I did something to his face. And then... <laughs> anyway, I killed this guy. But... It, He's like, yeah, you know, you killed me in this, and you killed me that way, and you killed me over there, and you killed me over there. And I was like, oh, that because they look different every time, you know. So it's but the same guys; they just redress them up. Sometimes, I mean, we have our A-list, I think, who are really good, and they usually make the front line. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, and and it's it, it's funny too because you know they're like, I'm a stunt guy. You can throw me around, you know. You can kick me in the face. I'm a stunt guy. It's cool, you know. And then there's other guys like I'm just I uh, don't don't you know. Um, I remember like the barn burning scene. Look, it was cold that night. Looking out and just seeing like a thousand zombies, and they all had snuggies on. It was like, like just, and they're all like, you know, like like a thousand of them in a field, and it's just like, wow, look at that. You don't see that every day, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, we have time for a few questions. If you guys have any, uh, we'll go right here. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, my mom took me to a Laurie Anderson concert when I was little. And if you don't know who Laurie Anderson, she's married to Lou Reed. But she was a, like a, a performance artist slash musician uh, from way back when. But she t my mom took me to this concert, and I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm like this little kid, and I'm like, what the fuck, right? And she comes out in this glow-in-the-dark outfit and glow-in-the-dark violin, and she's like... And then her face popped up on a screen behind it, and she goes, the sun's coming up. It's like a big bald head. And it just always stuck with me. Um, so I have a little production company called Big Bald Head. I'm Big Bald Head on pretty much everything. Um, but I have a book that just came out. And, or it's about to come out. I don't know. About to come out, I guess. But um, it's called The Sun's Coming Up Like a Big Bald Head. But I had to go to Laurie Anderson and ask permission. And Debbie Harry from Blondie and I went to a movie and ran into them. And 
so I kind of had to end a little bit. But um, she liked the photos, agreed to have the book, and now she's doing her own book of, pho of photography. But that's where Big Bald Head comes from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I heard the song Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it feels like it's us, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm down, you know? I'm having a good time. And, see, you know, little kids dressed up as me, and it's, it's, I mean, like, what's, that's, it's fun, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm just not one of those guys that's like, yeah, check me out, look at me, you know, I'm just not, you know, I'm kind of a dick, and yeah, I don't care, <laughs> right? I mean, it, it's fun, I mean, like, one girl sent me her boob, which is weird, I had a, it's, a, it's your cell phone, it's, right? It's, yeah, 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 you saw it. Yeah. It's my cell phone holder in my trailer in Georgia. But um, uh, another girl gave me, like, like, squirrel meat in a bag, right? And she's like, it's squirrel. I hunted it down with a shovel, right? And I was thinking, that, wow, that, you're so fast. How'd you do that, right? Um, I, I had two really sweet girls from Japan come and hold a bottle and, like, a a plastic bottle, and, and they go, please blow. And I was like, what? And they go, please blow. And so I blew in the bottle, and they, and they ran. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. You're, it's, you're, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's gotten weird sometimes, and it's gotten really sad sometimes. Uh, but for the most part, it's a blast. I, I mean, it's a blast, yeah. The... the Pie, the mountain of fan mail in your trailer is really a sight to behold. I think you posted a picture of it today or, or yesterday or something, but it's... Just, it's <laughs> yeah, that was almost... It, it's crazy. I get a lot of mail. But, um, I mean, as a thank you, I try to take pictures of, of objects, and I have a blog, and they just, I just repost them on a blog as a thank you, because I can't write that many letters. Um, and I feel bad, too, like, not writing everybody up. It's, it's just impossible. Even, like, Twitter. Like, I tweet somebody and go... <laughs> Like the fucking Matrix, you know what I mean? <laughs> and they're like, follow me. I'm like, wait, hold on, where are we? You know, it's gone. I did that, that survival instinct game, uh, and they took me to Activision out here. And I was supposed to have this live tweet sort of uh, announcement or whatever. And all the questions, it was going so fast, it was just a blur, like for hours. So I was like, I was like, all right, fuck this. And then you got the president of Activision going, I don't know what to do, oh my God. <laughs> and and I go, okay, let's play a game. Tweet attack in five, send three, send two, one, send. And it just went <laughs> for hours. It was like the, all, the whole, all of them came in there and they just, I was like, oh, I guess we're done. We're gone, you know. But it's fun. I, I like all the involvement. I think it's great. But it's, sometimes they're like, you know, why doesn't Daryl take a shower? You know? <laughs> I'm like, because it's a fucking apocalypse. There's, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> his, his hair is always pretty perfectly kept, though. Dude, my hair is... I just, I just... I tell our hair, but I'm just, let it go. Let it go. Just let it grow. You know, don't touch it. You know? I, I just... I, I'm, I just want to be a wild animal. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, we have time for one more. If you, We'll go right there. Yep. Hi. Hi. Oh, man. Um... You poor bastards. Um, I, you know, it's, it's weird. It's, it, 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 I mean, this job, I got really lucky on this job. I'll totally admit it. Um, I've done a bunch of stuff, but it didn't just fit like this, this part, you know? I, you got to really, I don't know, you, you got to be picky, I think. And you got to, I don't know, man. It's like, there's, there's all this, you know, it's funny, like, I talked, what's that school in New York where the people go and they learn about acting for, like, forever? <laughs> Whatever the shit. I don't, I don't know Stanislavski, I don't know any of that shit. I really don't. I don't even know what the fuck it means. <laughs> Honestly, no clue. Um, but, it, you know, and I met somebody from that school and I was, I, was, I was fascinated with, I was like, what do they teach you? Oh, they're talking something, I don't know. And I was like, well, do they teach you, like, like, you know, how to go get it? No, they just they just sit in a room and like talk about shit and fucking roll around. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, the, all the directors are out here. All the good writers are out here. 
all the good, there's a bazillion people in this town like making stuff. You know, I, I had a, uh, I started an art gallery in New York um, on Bowery that uh, we had editors and painters and uh, uh, people that made like, you know, giant saber toothed tigers for the Discovery Channel and shit, all in one building, right? And we just, we just made shit all the fucking time. So just make your own stuff is what I think too. Like, you must have friends that, that, do the same thing, you know, and do other aspects of the same thing. Like, just start doing your own shit. Like, I mean, especially now, like, uh, you know, it used to be like these people ruled that whole system, you know. Then those people, it became these people, and then it became this group. And now it's like, it's like a free for all right now. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Like, this, the whole notion of like, I gotta get the manager, and I gotta get the agent. And I don't think it's really like that. I think you just go get your friends and make shit and throw it out there and see where it goes. You know what I mean? Like, it, I don't, I'm not a fan of sitting around waiting for it to happen. I'd rather, I'd rather fuck it not happen and me go do a bunch of other stuff, you know? So uh, don't, uh, you know, don't, don't be afraid to make your own stuff, you know? Don't, don't let them tell you how to, how to pace your life. You know what I'm saying? Well, on that note, Norman, thank you so much. Give it up for Norman Reedus. Uh, thanks for having me.